how many people have ever heard of, of humans before? Ha, huh. I like you guys. This is a good room. I like this. So I'm going to pretend that you guys know a little bit, and then I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we do. And, and to be honest, I'm not really going to focus on a lot of the initiatives that we had done kind of before. Um, and I'm going to assume that you guys know a lot about the, the initiatives that we've done. I'm just going to focus on the things that we have done since COVID and since becoming a member in the Hub and some of the things that they'd helped us with connecting on. So uh, Hemans is lots of different businesses under one umbrella. So as long as you guys have heard of us, we think that's great. But we, are, we grow and uh, provide plants to our community as a garden center, growing majority of them, you know, obviously in this space here, but then also sourcing local uh, and uh, beyond for the rest of that. So we have that operation that's there, and then we also have our strawberries, which um, some people, either if you're a new plant person, maybe somebody who might have one of those pots there, you might know us for that. But a lot of people know us as a, as a strawberry farm, which is great. Um, so we are still shipping out those strawberries to uh, local stores now and have them available at our farm. And then we also have uh, an ice cream uh, place where you can basically get uh, anything you uh, any ice cream you want in the best flavors out there, strawberry or raspberry, because that's where we grow. And then um, we also have uh, hard cider and mead. So um, we kind of fell under, I think at the time that we joined, we were the first farm organization in any green economy hub within Canada. I don't know if that's still the fact, but um, we're retail, we're farm, and we're manufacturing as well. So. Um, we obviously have lots of different uh, farm partners we work with. If we're not growing it, we source local. Uh, and then we also have over 100 beehives, which, we're, um, which we are using to produce our honey and then also the meat uh, for our alcohol products there. So we have lots of different offerings that we, get, uh, that we offer. And then we also just, we're regular, the regular old farmers. So we also have corn, bean, wheat, and all that stuff for our proper soil health and rotation and doing all of those things as well. So, we have a couple things going on, which is why we appreciated um, the, uh, the opportunity to, to join this kind of a hub. So I wanted to just kind of uh, walk you back from, from where we were because my grandparents emigrated from Holland and they always kind of had this, um, uh, this mentality of doing things uh, a certain way. And I would say that being Dutch, we invented copper wire by fighting over a penny. And so my grandfather was always looking at ways to save money and to do things better. And so, you know, this is a contraption that we had that he built before I was born that was a water wheel so that we could reduce our watering so that you could actually have the plants go through and be watered and dipped and kind of go through. So um, we have always maintained that uh, what is good for the environment is good for your wallet because all of the different things that we have been doing have not only helped us to reduce our impact, but also to reduce our costs. So, um, we, we see those two things being hand in hand, and because you guys are uh, in, in this room, I think that you would agree, but um, when we, we were actually uh, sitting at a, at a family meeting and the Business Achievement Award nominations were coming up, and we were nominated as a, the environmental leader for the Business Achievement Awards, which just happened a couple days ago, and so I told my family, and they said, get out of here, no way, we're not, that's not us, we're not one of those people, we're just like, we're, um, I'm going to just say that they were not very sure that we were even worthy of being in the conversation, let alone putting our name forward, so I, uh, I basically put together everything that we had already done, which I won't bring up to you guys now, but uh, reducing our water impact by over 75%, reducing, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, just like before, and, and, and then reducing our chemicals and reducing and like recycling and blah, blah, blah. So long story short, we actually won that category. And I was like, see, guys, we're doing OK. And then right after that, I think, I don't know if you guys did it on purpose, but uh, the Green Economy Hub was starting within like two weeks. And so we got a, a thing that this hub was coming. And if you'd like to attend a, an information session at Labatt's, and I was like, well, it would look really dumb if the business that just won this environmental leader thing didn't even show up. So we're like, well, we're going to go. And then from there, uh, we became a founding uh, member. And then, as you can see with Skylar there, so, um, and that's kind of how we got into it. And so at the time, we got the, we got the pitch about, you know, what's involved and, and the help that could be there. And, and frankly, we just, 
kind of dove in because we thought it was the right thing to do. And there's kind of two, two kinds of people that I see out there. There's the people who recognize we have a problem and they're like going to lean in. And there's the people who look at it and say, this problem is really big and I'm just going to go hide in the corner because it is very daunting when you look at what we have to do. But one of the strengths of being in the hub is that you're in a group of like-minded people where you're looking at, at things and you're part of uh, a bigger cause, as you can see, from 55 projects already from uh, the short term. I wanted to go, woo, because when we went to the... Um, Green Economy Canada Hub, like it was right at the beginning of when London launched, and there are so many members and so many people that built up with that at the very beginning. Um, I left being like really proud because they were like, wow, you know, some hubs don't even get to 50 members after like eight years. And so we, there we were with 55 in, in the first three. So um, as I said, I'm only going to focus on the things that we've done most recently, and I'm going to name drop uh, some of the staff. But, so one of the things that I think is great about being part of the hub is, is having a direct line to people who know something that you don't know. And so by that I mean, uh, I, sorry man, but I pick on, I, I'll text and be like, yo, what do you, uh, like, what do you think about this? So um, whether it's Marianne and then Natalie and now Caitlin, uh, you direct access to people who know somebody who knows the answer to the question you might be thinking about, at least for me. So. Um, Right after joining the hub, we got a, uh, an information uh, thing about a um, net metering uh, project to be able to put forward for solar. So we said, yeah, we'll do that. And the reality is, is that when we did this, everyone that we approached afterwards, all the solar companies were shocked that we got it because there's so many people that put in for that. But we got advance notice that there was an information session. We attended that information session. From that information session, we heard, this is a good project uh, proposal. Uh, intake and it's going to be saturated and get your uh, thing together. So we worked with the hub and we got our application in that day, the first day within the first couple hours and we got accepted and I, I, I don't know what the odds were but they were not very good. But from that we, we put up this uh, solar installation which we wanted to be bigger but frankly I know London Hydro isn't here so I'm not with London Hydro, I'm sorry, we're with Hydro One the other day. And there, you know, so we have the, the grid limitations of being on a single phase, but so we had to bring back our, our scale of this. But even with this, this project was the first foray. We had always been trying to reduce our, our, our use in, in all different areas, but this is the first time we actually could like make our own energy. And so this project represents about 57% of our use. And I was actually looking at because I got a fun app and I can see like how much we're generating today and, and yesterday and how many. Um, so we've, um, this last week was probably pretty bad. yeah, I, I was looking, I was like, how cloudy is it? But like our total energy generation in September last year was a lot more than this year, but the, um, but with it overall, it's, um, it's helped us to be able to offset some of the, the needs that we have because as you guys who might follow us, we've gotten bigger over the years, but one of the things we've tried to focus on is keeping our bills the same. So even as we've uh, gotten bigger or doubled our impact, we want to keep our energy bills flat. And that, that alone is, is um, a win for us because I know we would talk, and talk about like the dirty secret about our industry. I don't know about you guys. Everyone has a secret. I'm just going to like air ours is that we have a plastic problem in our industry, like a major plastic problem. And also we're a greenhouse in the wintertime in Canada. So we have a fossil fuels problem because we are burning uh, natural gas. And so we've tried to look into alternatives. But that is, so when we're looking at all the things that we're doing, we're trying to focus on the things that we can have an immediate impact on and, and hoping that we can be part of a larger uh, solution on some of the other areas. So we've been, I'm going to say nitpicking around the edges, but like this project was $370,000 project that we did that we were able to get um, uh, $75,000 funding from the Canadian government and thanks to the hub. So. The other thing that Marianne had, had mentioned before was uh, Deep Hay Paradise. So for a couple years now, we've worked on the three different Deep Hay Paradise projects that they've done in helping the hub to um, source native plants for these projects, which we thought was great. Um, additionally, we have activated a green team since joining the hub as well. And so we've taken, and, and in this case, we were planting just over 43,000 square feet of farmland back into native plants. So from there, uh, it's on the back of our pick your own farm. So now we have those. They're looking beautiful now because uh, this planting was done last year. Um, but we also have our bees that are, uh, it's right near our bee yard. So it's all native plants that we were able to, uh, uh, to plant in there. Um, 
it's just kind of like returning some of our farmland back to uh, more of a native plant uh, cultivation. So additionally, last year we completed, I'm going to say close the loop on it. So um, if you haven't looked lately, for us, packaging, we did the math on it. Since we switched over a couple years ago, we've, we've converted a million pieces of packaging, whether those be straws, spoons, cups, lids, um, napkins, the, I mean, napkins were already compostable, really, but, um, but we've converted all these things, and the cost has actually gone down significantly, where we actually found when we looked at it five years ago, it was a lot more, but now it was actually the same or even less sometimes to buy these eco-plastics, which are made either to be uh, compostable or made with um, plastic made from plant based but, you know, the little sneaky thing is it's just greenwashing if you're not actually composting it, right? Because it's compostable in a commercial composting facility like anyone's got access to one of those. And I don't even have a green bin in London, let alone one of those. So what we did was we actually added this compostable stream. We worked with our, our hauler to actually uh, put in green bins. And now 100% of all of the compost that goes into there goes to a commercial composting facility so it can actually be broken down. So, um, yeah, I know. So it just costs uh, a little bit of money to do that. But really, like for us as a company, we're, we're saying, if we're going to signal it's important, we're making the effort to go with the packaging, but then we're just going to tell them, so put it in a landfill. So we wanted to make sure that that was tightened up. So um, we are able to do that as of uh, last August. Um, and then we've also been working with different community groups to. Um, support with native seeds. So we, we've been working with uh, LEN, uh, a couple different hospitals, the Upper, uh, Upper Thames Conservation Authority. This year alone, um, we've already given away 10,000 packets of native uh, seeds. So those are going to be going out to uh, people in the area. And then we've also started to try to source more native plants, more native seeds, which we understand is, at least in our, in our world, it's, it's a big problem because no growers want to grow native plants. They just don't want to. They're not profitable. They're not reliable. They're not uh, as farmable on a, on a really regimented schedule. So we're trying to push the wedge in and, and make that happen. It's not happening as fast as some people want, but we are certainly trying with different efforts. And then most recently, the last couple years, it's kind of seemed like we had a different thing to announce at Earth Day. But this year, um, we just put in our first uh, level two EV chargers. So uh, again, I want to stress like how quickly some of these things happen. I don't know. So we got an email from Green Economy London that there was this project that if you ha were uh, indigenous or women led, which he means is 50% female ownership, that you can apply. So we're like, okay, cool. Um, what's the information? Put in the uh, put in the uh, proposal, got approval really quickly, and then I called Mary and I'm like, so who uh, who puts in like the chargers? I, I don't have an EV at the moment. I didn't know the first thing about it, but I just called her and she said, well, here's a couple of things that other people are doing. The city of London is doing this thing with like uh, charge point. I was like, cool. City of London says it's cool. I'm gonna call them up. Called them up. He's like, great. I'll be there in two hours. Came out in two hours, brought the unit. We're like, that sounds good. Put in the uh, put in the order, and then uh, a month later they were in. So it was just that simple. So we've buried in more, but um, again, I'll throw the other guys on the bus. I can't even put in any more. The only reason we could do these is because we have the EV uh, chargers being fed from the solar. But again, our grid. So we buried lines to put in like 36 of these, but. I don't have the power to do it right now. So I was like, they're like, are you sure I do I'm like, that's tomorrow's problem. We'll just put them in today. But um, even with our solar, uh, we were able to call up because I didn't really know, you know, which kind of panels are good or which installation company is good. And so we were able to have a conversation with the hub to, to ask them. And they, and they gave us really good people to talk to. And we kind of did a little bit of research from that. But frankly, we, we did not do as much research as maybe you would think because we had um, if we were alone out in the wilderness trying to figure it all out, it would have been different. But we uh, were able to lean into those, those um, things. So um, I just want to put in one simple thing for this. I've already, through this whole presentation, kind of explained why we thought that it was uh, a worthwhile endeavor for us to, to, um, to go in. 
I haven't even mentioned the waste audits that they're helping us to do, the um, greenhouse gas emissions audits that we're doing through Green Economy Canada. Uh, we also were um, proud to represent the hub at the, what was this one called? With, uh, <laughs> I, I, there was like, it, I, was there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, it was, Anyways, it was in Toronto. Well so. planned as his prize, which was funny. And yeah. Green Economy Award. Yeah, so each, each hub would put forward a member to go on to this, um, to represent the hub on a national award. So the, in the first year that we joined the hub, we were honored to be representing London as, uh, as our community member. And then we also, so really good at giving you the shine, making you feel special, recognizing good things that are happening in the community because action that gets rewarded gets repeated. I believe that in, in our business and it, even with my furry old kid, uh, you know, it's like action that gets rewarded gets repeated. And I think, I, I think that the hub does a really good job of, of shining a spotlight on those different things. And uh, I am not shy in front of a camera and we are spending thousands of hours and hundreds of thousands of dollars on these projects. And I think that, um, frankly, we have a long way to go and we are not comfortable with where we are, but we also recognize that it's a journey like eating an elephant or climbing Everest. You just have to do one bite at a time, one project at a time because Small uh, steps lead to big change. And so, um, and I put this here because this is like ultimately our North Star. Like, I am the third generation of Hemans. I am not 93. It's, Hemans is 60 years next year. The, the, my grandparents started, and then my parents, and now myself. And, and I have kids. One of them is my kid, the other one is my nephew. But, you know, we intend on being good stewards of our land as farmers first and foremost that are, have a responsibility to the land that we own, to the community that we are part of. And uh, we firmly believe that community is only as strong as the effort that you make to grow it, just like a plant. So um, this is kind of our pledge and we, we look at uh, the, the hub and the green economy movement as a, as a whole as one key way that we can be part of something bigger as we move together uh, in society towards the change that we need. So. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. And it's so great to see everyone in person. Uh, I'm not sure on Zoom whether I look older or younger, but here I am. So I've been around for a while, and so good to see everyone here. Now let's jump into a couple things. Climate Emergency Action Plan. What you're going to see is where these wonderful stories you have just heard, these business success stories, these business leaders, fit into something that we collectively have developed in this community. We are talking about the Climate Emergency Action Plan approved by Municipal Council just this past April, developed over two years in the community with residents, with businesses, with business associations. You're going to see the connection here to dollars and cents, money saved, money spent, and why if we collectively work together, we can keep most of that in the local economy. People are talking about this worldwide. Quote on the screen, why it's important, the CFA Institute, Chartered Financial Analysts. When the money people start talking about climate change, you know you're making huge inroads. And in fact, you're gonna see that thread through this presentation. Why? Because it's going to cost a lot of money. The damage from climate change, if not addressed, it's going to cost us. So here's one report from a couple months ago, 139 billion damage dollars if we don't get things under control. Or that just might occur anyways. Therefore, how do you mitigate that and how do you actually do it better and cheaper? Here locally in London, we know where our greenhouse gases come from. We've been studying this for years, reporting on it. Finally, people are paying attention. Yes, some of it's our personal automobiles to the tune of about a third of our emissions. But if you look at businesses, we're all businesses in some respect. 40% of our greenhouse gas emissions are attributed to businesses here in London. Those are three, or sorry, four red arrows. That's why this group is here today. We know what has to be tackled. As part of our broader picture, working with council in the community, we accepted the 2050 as the net zero time frame. It's being adopted worldwide. Some countries are, are moving and provinces or states are moving quicker. Places like China are saying 2060. Kind of far out there in the future. Some of us might not be there at that time. 
In London here, we've said 2030. Science-based target is what we've got to shoot for. We've got about eight years to get there. We need lots of meetings like this. We need thousands of those business success stories as we move forward. The plan is three big goals. I won't get into them right here. Number one is measuring. When we designed the plan, we heard from Londoners. We chatted with our colleagues in other municipalities. We chatted with utilities. We came up with 10 areas of focus. You've got five on the screen now. We are touching the majority of greenhouse gas generation activities that have to be addressed, and we've launched them all. You'll see how we're tackling businesses, we're tackling development, we're tackling how we plan, we're tackling transportation. We have projects underway in all these areas. The next five, looking at the natural environment, climate change adaptation, we're looking at creativity, research, innovation, and a, me a memorandum of understanding has been signed between the city and Western University to push forward on projects and research. Something similar will be done with Fantra College in the future. Getting the next generation of people on board and keeping them here in London, a big part of that. Measuring, monitoring, all the stuff that we've done in the past at the city on behalf of many with contributions from London Hydro, Enbridge, many of the other people who are involved in the fossil fuel people, reporting in and reporting out what goes on locally with greenhouse gases. Thread through the areas of focus, three main things. Ongoing engagement, discussion, and learning. Not a one and done type situation. Alignment. We've seen far too often where we go in different directions. The community, the business, local government, provincial government, federal government. If we can align the majority of what we're doing, so we're rowing in the same or a similar direction, it will be much stronger. And finally, and important to the room here today, and for other members of GEL and the Chamber of Commerce, there is business opportunities threaded throughout all of the work plans. It is about the local economy. So the Climate Emergency Action Plan is a local economy project. I'm going to touch on a few things. When we developed it, we looked at what's going on here in London, and we found very quickly that many businesses, you look at two-thirds of the top 85 employers in London, already measure, talk about climate change, talk about sustainability. It's documented on their website. They are making public statements. Then you look at how people apply for things such as the Green Canada's Greenest Employers. We have businesses right here, or operations of larger corporations right here in London that are winning these awards. We are prime for doing more in the business, in the business community. And you look around. Why are we in this room today? Green Economy Canada, Green Economy London, the fastest growing hub. London was proud to be an initial member, and in fact, a, an adopter of the thinking quite some time ago on how can we pull all this together, and working with our friends and colleagues, it became successful. You folks are successful, and those today that are thinking about this, just sign on. It's a pretty easy decision to make. There's my sales pitch. Will did it a whole lot better, because he just showed you all the things that their company did. Looking around the world, though, there are things that are changing, and it's about money. How one is investing. The investment companies that are lining up and finally paying attention. Insurance companies. You've got these examples. These are all within the last four or five months, these kind of announcements that we're seeing. I'm going a little quick here, because I know your time is important, and you want to get to networking. So I want to chat to a few more of you, because I haven't met everyone here today. These things matter, and this one. Five years ago, did anyone really think about the United Nations and their sustainable development goals? Not really. Well, because it was always at a very high level. Finally, it actually is coming down. Companies are beginning to talk about them. Municipalities are beginning to talk about them. Great work is being done right here in the City of London uh, and the City of Guelph, led by groups such as the uh, Pillar Non for Profit. Uh, Luis uh, Patricio is doing some great work there, helping to embed this kind of thinking locally. This one's fascinating. How we're going to be disclosing information and the federal government wrote it into the budget in 2022. It has targeted banks. I think insurance companies will need to start reporting on what they are up to and those folks that they help fund. Once again, you start measuring things, you start reporting on things, 
we already know things begin to happen because we've seen that. We've heard that in Will's words about action comes from looking at your numbers. Governance, strategy, risk management, and the metrics are a key part of all this financial disclosure. So you, you read this, you see it in an announcement, and you wonder if this is real. Well, if you look at the London Free Press today, you'll see that the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board is talking about this and the 35 major companies that they're involved in and how it's all going to have to be documented and reported upon. The Asian Development Bank published their first report under these new guidelines, which came out about 2017. The money people talking about climate change. Just to end off here with a couple more slides, what's going on here in London? Well, like I said, our Climate Emergency Action Plan, for those that haven't read it, there's chunks of it that are important. The business side is key. There's a way to find opportunities, and I'll highlight a few of those. But it begins with just a little bit of time spent on that to uncover and unpack some of those opportunities, and then work in collaboration in some cases, or work on your own as you've seen today. When it comes to where are those new jobs, this is documented, and then you can see in London, we've just identified on our program here, we've got Mike and Jamie from the city, as we looked and dug deep into these sets of data that are out there, there are many opportunity categories. So on the screen here are six of the business areas that are going to grow. We need staff, we need employees in these particular areas. These also represent opportunities for growing. Everything from renewables right through to how we're going to actually expand the electricity network. There's a lot of work that has to be done there. If we're going to be heavy on electrification in the future, work has to be done. It's all there. The next level, not even a level, next package of opportunities. Very significant because these are local opportunities. And when you think about it, you might be in this business, you might be thinking about this business, or you might be a supplier to some of these business opportunities. And that supplier thing is key. And that'll be part of my last slide, which is right now. Six takeaways for you today depending on where you sit on the spectrum of your business activities. You heard about energy consumption, very, very key. Your supply chain, it is growing in demand to understand how that works, because that is where a lot of emissions are, and they're not accounted for or talked about. So bringing that into the equation is key. Decarbonizing that supply chain is even more important. Why? Because some of the big companies are now requiring through their procurement strategies that you demonstrate how you are decar decarbonizing what you're doing. And you need to report on that. And wouldn't it be a shame to lose a contract because your competitor was further ahead of you than that? Well, start thinking about that. Employee engagement, we talked about that. But at the city, we look at your, your employees. Quite often are residents of London or residents in the local communities. They're also visitors back and forth. So a message through the business community is a, to your staff, of course, is a, a message that is multi-purpose. The connections there are enormous. Reporting successes, you heard some about that today, and you heard three wonderful stories on incredible successes. And the Climate Action Plan, develop your own. In fact, all the tools that Green Economy London is offering up, I think will bring you 90% of the way. I'll leave it at that. Thank you.